Now let's go through a few key features your dating platform needs to be able to provide users with the services they need. So users need to be able to search and go through other users' profiles, find nearby matches, and they need to be able to communicate with whomever is behind the profile that tickles their fancy. Being individuals of a certain societal status, they need to know that there's no risk of their personal information or details of their escapades becoming public. No one likes to be catfished either, so all users on the platform need to be vetted before they can start using the platform. Lastly, for all your hard work finding partners for wealthy people, you need to make money, so there must be a way for users to pay you for your services. So now, let's look at the functionality required to bring our list of features to life. You will need some method to match users. It would be nice to just match fields such as hair color and nail size, but we all know human beings are much more complex than that. So let's rather use personality tests as the basis of the user matching exercise. We carry on in a similar fashion, identifying the primary functionality required to build our features. So now, let's unpack the primary functionality identified to explore how an API works in practical terms as well as the different forms it can take. We know of many instant messaging applications that we use on a daily basis. WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, the recently decommissioned Google Hangouts and so forth. We can think of them as pieces of software that perform the function of instant digital information exchange in regular text format between two users, each person using a digital device, be it a mobile phone or computer, to type and send the text message. We need to store user profiles somewhere and define a manner in which a user can search for potential matches, so we can create a database for the platform that stores user profiles. We also need somewhere to reference whether a user has made the required payment to access paid features. So we create a database where we store payments, accurately map a payment to the right user, and define the process of verifying the payment before giving the user rights to access paid features. For example, we may allow the user to search profiles for free. However, they would need to have a paid subscription to be able to communicate with potential partners. It can be quite a put off for users to be continuously matched with people they've matched with before and it didn't work out, particularly if rejection was involved on either side. So we create a database to store previous matches so as to ensure that when users come back to search again, we eliminate the previous match from new searches or match results.
Right, now we go through functionality that best take the form of microservices. So we have a service running on the platform that ensures that the platform and databases on the platform cannot be hacked and potentially expose sensitive user data publicly. We also have a service that vets user profiles by perhaps polling public databases for information such as marital status, criminal record status, and credit record status. The beauty about APIs is that the pieces of software being communicated with only have to expose the data required by the other pieces of software, which adds a much needed layer of security in the process. The consent of the user will be required, of course. This will help dissuade potential users from being dishonest about why they are really on the platform. We have a service that manages payments as well, and one that manages recurring payments generally referred to as subscriptions. The payments management service doesn't have access to the user's bank account while facilitating the payment. All it needs to know is confirmation that the user had enough to make the payment amount and that the money was deducted from the user's bank account successfully. Similarly, the piece of software that gives the user rights to paid features doesn't know or have access to the user's credit card information, for example. All it needs to do is get communication from the subscription and payments management pieces of software that the user made the requisite payment to be granted access to the paid features. We may also have a content moderation service that runs in the background on the dating platform to monitor the language of those users who tend to struggle managing the figurative horns that develop when one is engaged in conversation with a potential romantic partner to the point that their speech is altered from decent conversation to language that any reasonable decent human being would likely deem inappropriate or highly offensive. Then we consider operating systems. All these services, applications, and database storage and polling need to run on devices that operate in a particular way. Right, now let's go through the list of possible APIs that come out of our case study. These are some of the APIs that we can integrate into our dating platform to make our lives a little bit easier. Focus on dealing with the scourge of loneliness one match at a time instead of investing too much time writing code to develop incremental features that could best be described as reinventing the wheel. We are effectively accessing features of already established platforms via the APIs we're extracting here in the process of building our dating platform. Please note that this is in no way an endorsement of the said platforms. We are merely using them for illustrative purposes. Using APIs to access out-of-the-box capability can save a lot of time and money, depending on the type of agreements one can negotiate with the platforms one is accessing this capability from. On the surface, the benefits are quite obvious, but in some instances, things can be quite complex depending on data management legislation and such factors. It might also not necessarily be cost effective in the long run if one has to enter into software as a service agreements with multiple platform vendors to access functionality from their platforms. There are, however, ways to get around that such that the business case makes sense, but we'll discuss that in greater detail in later sections.
The point is that leveraging opportunities in the digital economy doesn't necessarily require one to be a technology whiz or invest in paying salaries to a large number of highly skilled developers over a long period of time before going to market, just as one doesn't need to invest in building a flower production plant to build and run a successful cake baking business. Now we get into the explanation of how these APIs help us to get our dating platform up and running. So instead of boring the user with a long registration process when they have to populate a mountain of fields to register, you can give them the option of using info from their Facebook profile. So your dating platform will fetch the data from the user's Facebook profile after the process of getting the user's consent. Instead of hiring a band of psychologists and the like to design a credible personality profiling model from which to build an algorithm, you might consider using an API to get some of other platforms algorithm where there's already a credible model and algorithm performing the personality classification function. The same process applies with integrating subscription capability on the platform. And so the process continues for the other components derived from our features list to construct our dating platform. All these APIs and eventually the entire composition of the dating platform have to obey certain nuances in order to work on a device running a particular operating system and be able to pass the process of listing the app on the particular operating system's app store, be it Apple App Store for iOS or Google Play Store for Android. And what does one need to use to be able to run their app on a particular operating system? Yep, you guessed it, an API. And here we are, from idea conception to potential API list. Join us in section two when we unpack the process from this stage, where and how to source the required APIs, essentially the fundamentals of API marketplaces. Thanks for watching, cheers for now.